Good evening and welcome to another WDSU Hot Seat Debate. I'm Travers Mackle. We all know that Election Day is fast approaching. It's coming up on December 11th. Tonight, we have both candidates in the runoff for the District B seat. We want to thank them for being here. They are incumbent city councilman Jay Banks and his challenger, Leslie Harris. Both Democrats, once again, thank you all for giving up your time and being here. We have a lot of questions to get to. So let's just jump right to it. We're going to start with opening statements. We're going to go alphabetically. So Mr. Banks, you get to start us off. You have 60 seconds to make an opening statement and let the viewers know why you feel you deserve another four years in office. Well, thank you. Thank you much for doing this. And first, I want to say thank you to all those who supported me in the primary. And we will continue to push because we represent qualified competent leadership, and I thank you all for vesting your votes in me, and we're going to work hard to get the folks that didn't. Now, my record is clear. I'm not making up things. I'm not telling you what I can do that can't be done. I'm not going to paint a picture of everything being doom and gloom. District B is in a much better position than what it was when I took place, and we're going to continue to talk about that. There has been substantive progress since I've been in office. I'm proud of my record, and that's what I'm running on. I hope to continue. We are at the cusp of getting very, very, very great things done throughout this city. And I'm happy to be a part of that progress. And I hope to continue in the role of the city council district B position. Everything I have is vested in New Orleans. I promise you, I'm gonna work very hard to make New Orleans be as best as it can be. And again, don't judge me by what people say, judge me by what you've seen me do. Thank you. You came in almost exactly at 60 seconds. That's good, it's a great way to start this off. All right, Ms. Harris, you have 60 seconds to make an opening statement. All right. Thank you, Travers. And I want to thank everyone who voted for me in the primary, everyone who supported me throughout this process. I'm a first time political candidate, and I'm proud to have had the support of the Democratic Party um, for a, a large number of voters in District B and everybody who's out there who's really taken an interest in how District B is going. Um, I've talked to my neighbors and my friends and coworkers who live in District B, and they're scared of crime. They're sick of torn up streets and burgling traffic lights. Uh, they're Family and friends are leaving New Orleans because of the quality of life issues and lack of economic opportunity. I, I want to tell you that I spent my 20 year legal career working for businesses, entrepreneurs and culture bearers in New Orleans, and I was chief of staff to President Tanya Tetlow at Loyola, and I helped write Loyola's finances, directed disaster management, and I listened to the Loyola community. I want to bring the skills that I learned throughout my legal career and as chief of staff at Loyola to this position. I'm not someone who's gonna say what I can't do. What I'm going to do is fix problems, build consensus, and figure out how to solve the problems that are fundamentally um, pr pr problematic to people in New Orleans. All right, we're gonna get right to the first question. Tens of millions of dollars are coming to this state right now in the infrastructure plan. I must say the bipartisan infrastructure plan, which I think is a good thing when everybody can find middle ground and work together. Ms. Harris, in 90 seconds, what areas of District B need that money? What do you plan to do when the city gets infrastructure money from DC? You have 90 seconds. Sure, absolutely. So the, the thing about District B is that while it's a diverse district, everybody has the same fundamental issues. The concerns are potholes that people are literally falling into, traffic lights that are out and blinking, and there's no end in sight. I live in Central City um, near what I like to call the Big Dig, which is right up the street here. Um, it's been going on for about a year. So what we need to do is make sure that we're holding our contractors accountable, that we have an online real-time construction management tracker so that people of New Orleans can see when construction starts its progress and when it's supposed to end. We also need to focus on getting this money um, directed to the projects that are most important, including these traffic lights. I mean, why, why are the traffic lights around City Hall out? Um, we're out there waving signs and we're seeing uh, accidents happening um, in front of City Hall. So we just really need to focus on the priorities in District B. Um, and I think that's basic infrastructure, um, potholes, street lights, and we need to just get it fixed. All right, Mr. Banks, same question. A lot of federal money is coming into the city of New Orleans. That's a good thing. In 90 seconds, how should that money be spent in District B? What are the big critical issues for infrastructure when it comes to the district you currently represent? Obviously, the one common denominator that everyone in New Orleans faces is water. I drink the water or drain it. 
we need to make sure that we get all of the pieces in place at the Sewage and Water Board to make sure our city can stay dry and we can have potable water. Now, it's real easy to talk about things that really don't make a difference. The truth is, is that that one common denominator is we have to have a working, sustainable drainage and water system. That's why I think the focus needs to be first. Now, since I've been on the council, more money has been spent on rebuilding the streets of an Orleans Parish and in District B than has been spent in decades. I'm very proud of that. And when you talk about the big dig, the truth is you can't fix the streets unless you dig them up. It truly shows a sense of naivety or real disingenuousness to talk about you can fix the streets without fixing them. They have to be dug up to be completed. There has been more money spent since 2017 when I went on the council than has been spent in decades. I'm very proud of the fact that we're getting it fixed. We will continue to focus on those quality of life issues, fixing streets, getting the drainage system where it needs to be, and making sure that all of our citizens have a quality of life to be proud of. None of this is made up of Pollyanna. It's happening today. And I'm very proud to be a part of the progress that is taking place right now and want to continue to do that. All right, let's jump to this question with you. Another critical infrastructure need, energy. Obviously, after Hurricane Ida, people wanted their power turned back on. It seems like there's always a lag. We'll start with you, Councilman Banks, in 60 seconds. If you are elected, how do you better make sure that energy is, one, acting in good faith? They've already said they may want to leave the city of New Orleans. And two, that they work to get people's power turned back on in a timely manner. Well, let's be clear. Entergy has to be held accountable. I have been on the side of holding them accountable for every single thing that they have done inaccurately. But after Hurricane Ida, lights were on in all these parishes in some neighborhoods in a day and a half and all the, over the whole city in a week. There are still places in Jefferson Parish that are dark today. So this council has been intentional on holding energy accountable now. Can more be done? Absolutely more can be done. Everything can be done better. We are in a constant state of trying to improve. So as we stand now, the intention is to keep holding them accountable, to make sure that the lights work and come on when they're supposed to, and to minimize the outages due to lack of maintenance. That is what we intend to do. And we have been doing it. And I want to remind you, in Orleans Parish, the lights came on in some parts of the city in a day and a half after a Category 4 hurricane and over the whole city in less than a week. That is unheard of with a Category 4 storm. So while, again, everything is not perfect, it's a lot better than some want to make it be. And I think the areas of Jefferson Parish, obviously low-lying parts of Lafitte and Grand Isle, the bulk of the parish still does have power. Um, Ms. Harris, 60 seconds, your answer to that, if elected, how would you work to get power restored and hold energy accountable as the city council does regulate energy New Orleans? So let me say this, the third place finisher Rella Zapp was held in an auto mailer, and I think it was apt. It had a picture of Jay Banks in the pocket of Entergy. Jay Banks worked for Entergy, was a consultant for Entergy. He also was a consultant for Legend Consulting. He did not disclose that to the people of New Orleans until a citizen asked him and called him out about that. Um, and so I don't think that this current council person can hold Entergy accountable, having worked for them as a consultant and been paid for them. So let me be clear about that, number one. Number two, I think that Helena Moreno asking for an independent investigation of what happened um, during Hurricane Ada, I fully support that. I think we need to get the facts, figure out what went wrong and what may have gone right. But let me tell you that I was out here right after the storm and people of District B did not get lights on immediately. People were out of energy for weeks. Um, and so saying that it, the energy came on um, quickly is just disingenuous. The Mr. Banks, really quickly, about go ahead, if you want to respond to that really quick. Had been here, you would have known that. But the truth is the lights were on in less than a week. And was I was here, Mr. Banks, I was here. You saw me out here volunteering. So I was here right after the storm volunteering with the community. I did not come back. I never left, Mr. Banks. Yeah, Mr. Banks, would you like to respond really quickly in about 10 or 15 seconds about, about working for Entergy since Ms. Harris did bring it up? Out of the fact that I worked on both sides. I worked for Energy and I worked for the utility advisors of the city council. I understand how Entergy works and I understand how the advisors work. No one in this race is better qualified to understand regulating energy than I am. I have played on both sides of the field. I clearly understand the process, which is something that my opponent clearly doesn't. And at the end of the day, I'm proud of my record. I was hired by the council from Entergy. I was an Entergy consultant and the council 
utility advisors hired me. I understand how they work. And I was glad to serve my city on that side. So yes, I'm proud of my record. All right, we could, we could talk energy all day. I know it's a hot button issue, but we would like to move on. I appreciate you guys having so much passion about this interest, about this topic, so do all the viewers, I'm sure. Ms. Harris, we'll start this with you. Let's talk crime. I, I know it's a big ask here, but in 90 seconds, crime is plaguing parts of District B from uptown to Central City to the parts of the CBD where, where I work, which is in District B. So six, about 90 seconds, we want to give more time. 90 seconds, what is your plan for crime in District B? We have to focus on violent crime prevention and deterrence. And I've actually spoken to Cedric Richmond and Troy Carter about getting additional funds down here to support our first responders, not only NOPD, but emergency services like the fire department, which is at critically low levels and EMS. Um, and they are part of the fight against violent crime. Um, I've come home uh, the other day to a shooting here in Central City. It is absolutely out of control. The way to prevent it is to increase recruitment and retention at NOPD. I've spoken to officers on the ground. They're being moved from district to district without having any continuity in the community. And so there can't be effective community policing when our NOPD officers are moved around from district to district because there's a lack of manpower. So the plan is to get additional funding down here, to get additional training for our NOPD officers and to get guns off the streets. We can also invest in prevention programs, programs like at YEP, which are right on OC Haley, um, in order to provide our young people a better opportunity to see a future in New Orleans and so that they don't commit violent crime. All right, Councilman Banks, same question. In 90 seconds, what is your plan to combat crime, violent crime and petty theft across District B? We're never going to arrest our way out of crime. We've got to stop creating criminals on one hand, and then on the other hand, we've got to stop the revolving door in the justice system. I have been involved in processes right now trying to get a solid, mandatory evaluation system so that people aren't released on ankle monitors just willy-nilly. The truth is we've got police officers that are doing their job. NOPD has a very good solve rate. What happens is when they get after they're arrested, you have criminals telling the police, I'm going to be out before you get off your ship. That's unfortunate. The truth is we've got to get all of the components of the criminal justice system working. Crime is not just the police problem. It's also the judges, it's the clerk, and it's the DA. And if the DA would start prosecuting some of the people that have been arrested, there's a real probability that the crime would go down. So what you have to understand is this, this is a systematic process. It's bigger than the council. It's not just the police. It is the entire system that has to be working together to address it on that side. But even before you get to that, you've got to give these kids realistic opportunities so that crime never becomes an option. You've got to give them hope. You've got to give them a chance of success. You've got to give them something that they can see so that they really don't ever consider doing something nefarious. It's two different tracks. We've got to stop creating criminals, and then we've got to effectively deal with the ones that we have. The police chief was at a, at a hearing a couple of weeks ago. He talked about how demoralized the police are because they do their jobs and then the criminals are released immediately. There is something wrong with that system. So if there's anything that's begun to encourage the DA and the rest of those components to actually do their jobs, that would help us in the meantime. So let me come, jump to this really quickly. In runoff elections, support and endorsements are very important. You all have two distinctive endorsements here. We'll start with you, Council Member Banks. You were endorsed by the mayor, Latoya Cantrell. How do you think that endorsement helps you in 60 seconds? Not just the mayor, the mayor, the governor, every state representative that represents District B, the state senator that represents District B, the school board members that represent District B, one of the opponents that ran against me, I'm endorsed by labor, I'm endorsed by business, I'm endorsed by Republicans, by Democrats, I'm endorsed by every single demographic segment that represent the citizens of District B. I'm proud of that. And they endorsed me because they see the kind of leadership that I provide. I'm open to listening to everybody. I'm proud of the endorsements that I have because they represent not only District B, but all of New Orleans across the board. And I'm very, very excited that those people who understand how these processes work, who understand that this is not the time for a learning curve. It's not the time for just pie in the sky promises. It's the time to have someone in a position that can actually work and get things done as opposed to making up na 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 fallacies about all they can do when they don't have the ability to do that. Those people vested their endorsement in me because they see what they get. 
All right, Ms. Harris, you have a big endorsement. District Attorney Jason Williams threw his support behind you. How do you think that endorsement helps you in a runoff election? Jason has known me for 20 years. He knows my background. He's known my legal career. He's known my work at Loyola University. Running Loyola was like running a small city. So when Jay Banks sits and says, this is not an I'm pie in the sky in Pollyanna, it's very insulting, especially from a man coming to a woman. I know what I'm doing. I know, to, I know how to solve problems. And I'm not someone who, like Mr. Banks, is going to say, I can't fix potholes and I can't fix crime and throw up his hands in the air. Um, so I'm proud of the endorsement of Jason Williams. I'm proud of the proud to be the official Democratic um, candidate in this race. I'm proud of all of the endorsements, but even more than that, I'm proud of the people out there who voted. 55% of the population in District B did not vote for Mr. Banks. They voted for other people in this race. And I'm asking them to come out in this runoff election and vote for me. All right, I told y'all we we're gonna have a minute for the answers, but we wanna give y'all a chance to make a 60 second close. Here's 30 seconds for this one. We'll start with you, Ms. Harris. What needs to happen with the sewage and water board? It was raided by the FBI in 30 seconds. What needs to happen there? And I really have to hold you to 30 because we want to give you all a chance to make a, a closing statement. Sure. Mr. Banks actually sits on the sewer and water board, so um, we should ask him about that raid. But let me tell you this. There have been plans in place and looked at and studies done to put the sewer and water board under Department of Public Works. At the very least, we need someone to coordinate between the two entities so that things, projects get done on time, efficiently, and um, for the people of District B. All right, Mr. Banks, in about 30 seconds, what needs to happen with the sewage and water board, which we all know was raided by the FBI recently? Water board records were taken by the FBI investigating nefarious employees. Those employees need to be held accountable. The truth is, though, that just Leslie's naivety completes, it, it just shines all over the place. The sewage and water board is a state chartered entity. So before anybody can take it over, it has to come from the state. So with that being said, I'm very proud of the work that we have done in getting the sewage and water board stabilized. The sewage and water board actually sent water to Jefferson Parish, who was under boil water advisory after Ida. The truth be told, the sewage and water board is much better today, now that I'm on the board, than the order was prior to me being there. And I'm proud of that. And that's something she can't dispute. Also, she talks about my record. If she was so great at Loyola, why isn't she there anymore? Tanya Tutlow is a very, very, very smart, capable woman. You mean to tell me that Loyola was going to go belly up if, if, if Leslie hadn't been there? And the other side of that is, why won't Leslie say why she left Loyola? Why is she no longer there if she was the savior that saw the all at Loyola? Now, I am supported by because I have supported women's issues since I have been a human being. I think fairness and equity is something we all should be striving for. So trying to talk about her being a woman and me being a man is just disingenuous, but so is much of what she says, quite disingenuous. All right, Ms. Before we get the closing statements, Ms. Harris, would you like 10 seconds just to respond to that Loyola comment really quickly here? Because we are running sure. out of time. I stand on my record at Loyola. I'm dear friends with Tanya Tetlow. Um, I'm dear friends with many people who I worked with. I'm proud of my record there. And you can ask anybody at Loyola about what I did there and how I solved problems and what I'm capable of doing. All right. We, we're going to give you all a minute each. If you can keep it to a minute, because we do have to squeeze this into the newscast right here. We'll start with you, Ms. Harris. This has been a pretty good debate, obviously. A lot of passion. We like to see that. We'll start with you, 60 seconds for a closing statement, and we'll end with the councilman. Sure. Thank you, Travers. I just want to thank the people of District B um, who are watching and who have voted for me. We obviously need change. We need change, and that's evident just by what happened in this debate. Um, the uh, arrogance that council member Banks showed today is, is just emblematic of his leadership, which is a lack of leadership. We need a leader who can actually get things done. I have the legal and administrative background to actually solve problems, to build consensus, and my background shows it. I stand on my record, and I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and actually work to get things done for the people of District B. Um, so I hope that you will vote for me. It's very critically important that people get out there and vote. Um, and my name is Leslie Harris and I'm number 41 on the ballot. All right, thank you, Ms. Harris. We're gonna end with you, Councilman Banks. You have 60 seconds to make the statement why you feel you deserve four more years and deserve to be reelected. You have 60 seconds. Proven leadership experience, a commitment to this community that is unqualified. The truth of the matter is, is that I have been an effective leader. I wanna to continue to do that. 
And it's totally ridiculous for Ms. Harris and her naivety to pretend that because she's a woman, there is some issue. The truth of the matter is Leslie has attacked me from day one. I just responded to her for the first time in this debate. And now all of a sudden it's gonna be a sexist thing. The truth is, is that she is totally unqualified. She is totally naive, does not understand the processes and the district deserves someone who understands how the system works. The district deserves a council member who understands how to get things done. Doesn't make up na 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 Pollyanna excuses and make promises that can't be kept. The truth of the matter is I'm experienced. I've got a record that you can see and I wanna continue serving the citizens of New Orleans. All I have is in District B. If something goes wrong in New Orleans, unlike Leslie, I'm not gonna be able to pack up and just go home. I am home. Everything I have is right here. If things don't go right here, Leslie will be on a jet next week. That's not the case with me. I am holistically committed to making District B be as best as it can be because everything I've got is here. And I want it to be best, not just for my family, but for all of yours too. And I ask you to please look at the two of us, look who offers what, and please give me your vote on the election day. Thank you. All right. I wish we could keep going because this is a pretty good discussion and a pretty good debate. Both of you all make very solid points. Leslie Harris, Council Member Jay Banks, we appreciate your time. Once again, Election Day is December 11th. Please go vote. I'm Travers Mackle. That's all the time we have for the hot.